I can never be depressed if I never slow down. Speed is extremely important. Speed defies gravity. How, do, how does a plane fly through the air and defy gravity? Speed. It's moving too fast to fall. If you're always attacking life, if you're always doing things, if you're always making more money, if you're always traveling the world, doing this, doing that, new car, here, there, new podcast, me and James English, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, if you're always doing things all the time, unhappiness can't catch you. But I also know that speed is a is a fantastic way to be happy all the time i'm always looking forward i'm always looking forward to something i wake up every day excited i'll go do this today i'll go do this today I'll go do this today and i very much live my life in a frame of no i have to do this it's very much a, i get to do this there's another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when i talk to them like oh i have to go to work today change your language i get to go to work today imagine you had no job It'd be worse right because otherwise you wouldn't be working so you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't bought one. Oh, I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. You understand? People's even their own language is wrong. It, the world is, can be framed. Maybe I'm completely crazy. Maybe I'm full of shit, like you said. Maybe I am. But the frames I've installed in my mind are all beneficial to me. So if that makes me crazy and full of shit, good. <laughs> because I can't become depressed. So you can sit there and tell me I'm full of shit while you're depressed, and I'm happy. And I would never want to adopt the thinking of a depressed person. People will, people will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, oh, that's a scam. Or, I don't work hard, I work smart. Bollocks, more, more cover. For just, anything it takes to say, Do you I don't want to work. Do you believe in that work smart or not harder? I believe in both. Yeah. But there's a time when it comes to work smart. And most people are trying to do the smart work before they do the hard work. It's kind of like talent, right? You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I could be the most talented tennis player in the world, but I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1% and now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart, I don't work hard, so I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting in the car, I'm going to another meeting, work. I wanna to go to the gym so I'm in good shape, work. It's all work, my entire life is work. And people don't wanna look at life that way. They wanna talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you wanna win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're gonna sit there and go, I don't wanna work more than an hour a day, well, the guy who does wanna work more than an hour a day is gonna beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. That's just the nature of the game. It's the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not gonna learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down until he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's, the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's, yeah. and don't, and don't be done with it. So you need to, you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to, uh, to a degree, some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So yeah, business studies, you're right. The book, that's, that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to, you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's and, and life really doesn't have to be that complicated. When you see somebody that has something you want, you just got to try and work out how they got it. Yeah. And that's the missing part. Most people see people with things they want and they don't do the, the second half. They don't try and work out how they got that thing. Oh, my man has a Ferrari. Okay. I wish I had a Ferrari. Okay. They don't sit there and go for an hour. How did he get a Ferrari? 
It doesn't cross. That that part is the part they don't want to do, right? They just go, oh, he's a Ferrari. Wish I had a Ferrari. And they go back to TV. Yeah. And that's why they lose. It's player versus player out here, man. It's on the street. It's not easy. For every dollar you make, for every pound you take, you took it from someone else. You don't make money. You take money. People don't understand the way that money works. You're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from thin air. Every single pound in your bank is money you took from someone else. And when I say take, I don't mean it in a negative way. You might have convinced them to give it to you. You might have a coffee shop. I'll give you a nice coffee. You'll give me some money. Cool. But you still took his money, yeah. right? So if you're out here trying to take stuff from other people, don't you want to have a team? You want to do it by yourself? You want to be Rambo? Because if I mean, you get two of you doing it. You get two of you. you that's right. So the whole idea of this lone soldier, this Rambo, I'll do it all by myself. That's all dead, bro. You need to have a team. It's player versus player. And for the same reason, if you were out here on the street and you want to defend yourself, you want your boys around you. It's the same thing with trying to get rich. Then you're laughing with your boys. Yeah. The brokey days are great. And I'm not complaining about being rich. Obviously, I worked hard for this and it's, and it's a fantastic life I live now. But I think without those brokey days, without those original days to compare it to, without that juxtaposition, then I don't think being rich would be fun at all. I think it's only fun because you can compare it to the days when you weren't rich. That's the only thing that makes it fun. The only thing that makes my $10,000 stake fun is that you can laugh saying how you never had 10 grand in your bank till you were 27 years old. Yeah. Like that's the, otherwise it's boring. Otherwise you okay, stake. And I think if you're born with too much money that you'll never truly be happy. I think you need the broken days are the best days. The best yeah. days. You meet somebody wealthy, their family at one point was not wealthy. And then the one shows up. One person changes the family tree forever. In my family, I'm the one. And it wasn't because I wanted it or I hoped for it. I fought for it. I want to fight for my family. I want my mom and dad proud of me. I want me proud of me. I want to look in the mirror and be happy with the man I look back at. That he gave it everything. That he went for it. That's what I want for you. I want you to be happy with you, not cool. I've seen all kinds of cool guys my whole career. Cool guys go broke. They have a good two or three years. Players who implement strategies that get focused and intense, they win decades. You gotta win year after year after year. I'm almost 50 years old, man. I've got a loaded calendar. I'm after it. I'm not casual. I wanna win. You hear me? Wake up! You want to win? You want to be a millionaire? You got to quit being so casual. You walk slow. You implement things slow. You talk a good game like you're going to be somebody. Business is a sport. It's competitive. You got to get focused and get in a hurry. Wake up, brother. If you make a couple of these adjustments, man, you could change your life. You could change your family forever. It's not casual. You can change the chapters in the book of your life if you want to. You're the author. It might be year two, three, four before you get your big win, but you could decide now, I'm gonna walk, talk, and be a different person. You're the lead character in the story of your life. But too many of you let the, what I call the extras of life dictate where you're going. Y'all hear me? Here's the truth. Most people's dreams can be bought. With enough failure, they will sell their children's dreams. They can't still fight. With a little success or a whole bunch of failure, most people will sell their will to win. Some of you have sold it because you're making a little bit of money. You don't work like you did when you were making nothing. Some of you will sell your win for some failure. You're probably viable, but if you decide that my will cannot be bought, I'll keep fighting for my family. I'm the one. I'm going to change my family tree forever. Decide now. You're going to keep negotiating the price or can you not be bought? That is you. That is you that no one can do it for you but you. You must understand that. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie, and I beat him 10 straight games in a game called Connect Four. And I got up, I said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win. We sat down and we played several other games, and finally, John Leslie won, and he got up and he yawned. And he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. What if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no, or we have a meeting and no one shows up? What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, but you're still looking at your dream, say to yourself, it's not over until I win. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's me. I've got to make it happen. 
It's not over until I win. As you run toward your dream, it's necessary that you have goals, that you write those goals down, that you plan. It's also necessary that you look for ways to always find a way to pull it out when everybody else thinks that you are defeated. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It was hard when just over three years ago and I fell on some hard times and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby and the security said, can we see you for a moment? And he gave me an envelope and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. Do not sleep in your office. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs. He sleeps on the floor. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm not trying to steal a rock from anybody. How did this have to happen to me? And here's what I want to say to you. Don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, that one day I would have my own talk show from Liberty City in an abandoned building on a floor never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop running toward your dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one. Begin to envision yourselves as being blessed and highly favored to reach your goals. That you can make your parents proud. You can touch millions of people's lives and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. But that's why you're here. Because you are the one. It's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor, looking out of the window, daydreaming, saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? And something said within me, you're the one. You're the one. I always knew it was a trick and a con. I didn't truly understand things to the level I understand them now. But I had an intrinsic understanding, and I think everybody does. If you're if you're at a gas station and it's three in the morning and, and a Lambo pulls up and a guy gets out of it, you're thinking criminal, drug dealer, gangster. Yeah. You're not thinking, ah, he has a uni degree. Because you, you know, you're not gonna think that. So when you see money, people don't even associate the money they see with university. But then they go, I wanna make money so I'm in university. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So. Be a slave, be a slave, be a slave. Every single government in the world is interested in control. That's all they've ever wanted. That's all they ever want more of. Governments want control. They want to control their populace. They think of us as sheep. We're cattle to them. They want us to comply. They don't want our individuality. They don't want us to think for ourselves. They want us to just sit there and obey like robots. So every single one of them is slowly inching day by day, pushing the limits, taking as much control as they can from the people to the people revolt. Mm -hmm. And if they do it slowly and incrementally, they get away with a lot. This is beyond money. The, the people in charge of the world print the money. They don't care about, about money. They don't care about economies. They don't care about taxes. All these things are brokey cons considerations. When you print the money, do you think you give a shit if the economy is good or bad? You print the money. You don't care. What you care about is when you click your fingers, do people obey you? When I talk about the matrix, I'm talking about the systems which have been created by society, which are deliberately designed to enslave. In the movie, the Matrix were used for our body heat, but here in, in this Matrix were used for our efforts and our energies. And you're existing inside of a system which is deliberately rigged to make the rich richer and for the poor to stay poor. Yeah. And 
for you can sit there and get upset about it. You can sit there and cry about it and say the system needs to change, which is what some people do, socialists, X, Y, Z. But I think that's not, I think, I know that's a waste of time, right? That's futile. The best thing to do is to understand the rules of the game and find a way to win. So yes, the game is rigged. Yes, the richer are always going to get richer. Yes, the poor are always going to struggle. And that's the way the game is set up. So you still need to find the best move on the chessboard. There's no point sitting there saying, I want to play a different game because that's never going to happen. Because the people with the money are the people who have the control and they have the power. And why would they have the game set up any other way? Why would they change? One of the largest things that hold people back from wealth is the people around them. Not only because of the mindsets of the people around them, but also trying to find people around you who you can truly actually trust is difficult. I always was always close with my brother because, and he's always been close with me because we are a team and you need to have a team. And if you have a team, you stand a better chance. It's player versus player out here, man. It's on the street. It's not easy for every dollar you make, for every pound you take, you took it from someone else. You don't make money, you take money. People don't understand the way that money works. You're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from thin air. Every single pound in your bank is money you took from someone else. And when I say take, I don't mean it in a negative way. You might have convinced them to give it to you. You might have a coffee shop. I'll give you a nice coffee. You'll give me some money. Cool. But you still took his money, yeah. right? It's the true nature of the universe. You have to learn that you, you have to take things from other people. And by taking it, I'm not saying go rob a bank. I'm not saying that. I'm saying com completely the opposite. You can be a philanthropist. I'm taking money from everyone inside of HU, but I'm changing their lives. It's a good thing. You can take money in a positive way. Most people don't look at the life, look at life that way. And when you look at life that way, you need to start identifying. One of the things we teach inside of HU is to identify every single time your money is taken from you. So I say this to people, I say for the next two weeks, every time you spend money, even if it's a pound, write down how they got it from you. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, all right, cool. You're walking down the street, you're going to Starbucks, you buy a coffee. Why did they take your money? Well, I wanted coffee. Yeah, but how, okay, you wanted coffee, right? Cool. Did you only want a coffee because you saw Starbucks or did you want a coffee beforehand? Why did you want their coffee and not another coffee? Did you buy a cake as well? Why did you buy a cake? All right, cool. So now you identified how they took your money. Then realize how they could have took more of your money. You bought a cake, but you didn't buy a sandwich. Why? The sandwiches weren't on display. Or they looked cold. Or they looked rubbish. Or the woman who was serving me was old and ugly. Maybe she was a young cutie and talked to me about bologna sandwiches or a bomb. Right? So you need to start identifying how your money is taken from you. Mm. Because once you identify how your money is taken from you, you can start to actually intelligently think about how you can take money from other people. If I had to open a, uh, a coffee shop, if I, if I sit in a coffee shop, right? If I sit in Starbucks, the whole time I'm in there, not only am I thinking about how they got the money from me and how much I spend, I'm thinking about how I could outcompete them. I'd sit there and go, okay, cool. I'm in Starbucks. I spent £5.68. I got a latte and I got a donut. And I'm sitting here. And that business place, that, that, that commercial property right across the street is available for this. How could I outcompete this coffee shop which just took my money? What's the profit margin on this £5.68? How much did this cost them? The coffee, pennies. The donut, 30 p minutes. Right? How much is the staff? They pay the staff minimum wage eight pound an hour. So I've already paid half. I've already paid thirty minutes work for that. She's there for another thirty minutes for free. Right? How much is the rent? How much is the business rates? If I had to open up there, how would I attract people to come into my shop as opposed to their shop? They got a big brand name. I'm brand new. Okay. Well, the bitch working here is ugly. My one's gonna be hot. Boom. That's the beginning. Next thing, do they have any signage outside? No. I'm gonna try and put some signage outside. Do they have parking? No. I need parking. But you need to start thinking about how you can convince people to give you their money as opposed to giving it to the places they already give it. And, and once you do that, people say, I can't think of how to make money. If you start doing that for a year and just keep a notepad, you'll have a hundred ideas of how to make money. You'll sit there and go, there's a place here that's doing this. And we could do it better this way. This place online is doing this. We can do it better this way. And then, and then to get them all done, what do you need? Network. You need people. It's all about people. I always knew that even when I was fighting and I was always trying to find a way to make money. Even when I was fighting, all I did was try different ways to make money. I tried a, I tried a million things and that's what you have to do. You have to try a bunch of things and learn a bunch of lessons until you find, finally find something that works. The problem is as well, it's difficult because the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson is taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down until he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, 
you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? Mm. So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's, the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's yeah. and don't and don't be dumb with it. So you need to you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to a, to a degree some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So, yeah, business studies. You're right. The book that's that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's kind of how it works. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting the car and going to another meeting. Work. I want to go to the gym so I'm in good shape. Work. It's all work. My entire life is work. And people don't want to look at life that way. They want to talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you want to win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day. Well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I could be the most talented tennis player in the world, but I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1% and now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart, I don't work hard, so I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. The traditional, the traditional path to wealth is terrible advice. They'll go to university, get a degree, get a job, blah, blah, blah. That's terrible advice. We already know that. We talked about that. I think follow your passion is also a ter terrible piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. They, people say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. And motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do every day. I don't wake up full of like joy that I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or got to deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. So when someone comes along and says, oh, do what you're passionate about, what they're saying is you'll have endless motivation and then you'll be able to try hard. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail because most things you enjoy don't pay any money. If they paid money, you wouldn't enjoy them. It's called a job, right? Nobody likes their job. You like your hobby. I'm sure you like playing video games. Maybe 1%, 0.1% can make money from video games, right? Most people, you ain't ever going to make it. Yeah. Do you think the guy in China who owns a concrete plant is passionate about concrete? Do you think he's sitting there stroking it at night, <laughs> naked in bed? It's money. Be passionate about success. If you're passionate about money, then you can be passionate about anything. I'll be passionate about any business on earth that pays me. If you pay me a billion dollars to dig that hole, I'll be very passionate about that hole. I, I obviously know what I'm talking about to some degree, right? So if, if, if Mike Tyson walks in here and tells you he's going to teach you how to box and says you can't fight, you're a pussy. If that upsets you, then you can't learn, right? It's Mike Tyson. Just shut up and listen. <laughs> if, if, if someone richer than me comes along and says, Andrew, you don't know shit. You're a dumbass and you're a brokey. I'm going to sit there and go, okay, maybe I'm a brokey. Elon, tell me something. Right? I'll listen, but if you're going to sit there and go, don't call me names, and then I'm not listening, you're never going to get anywhere, right? You don't, become, you don't become the master unless you're very, very good at being a student. And I've always been very, very good at knowing when to shut up. Oh, a lot of people with no money are, are, are really, really arrogant. I know a lot of broke people who are very arrogant. And their arrogance is a shield for their laziness. People will, people will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, oh, that's a scam. Or, I don't work hard, I work smart. Bollocks, more, more cover. Quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey bro, let's get it. And guess what they're gonna do at the end? Quit. Quit, <laughs> they ain't never gonna have shit. So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never gonna be successful. Right? You need the people who don't quit. I don't quit. 
Every single facet of my life is testament to the fact that I don't quit. When people see my plane in the sky, you can, you can say whatever you want about me. You can call me arrogant. You can call me anything you want, but you cannot call me a quitter. I didn't quit. So that's the difference. When it was hard, I did it anyway. That's who I've always been. And if you don't have that kind of tenacity, you're never going to be anything. So look, everyone loves passive money, right? I make money as I sleep. I get it. You, you need to de-link your time to your money because if you're only working for money, you run out of time, you can't make enough money. I understand all those principles. My point is, if you have no money and you're coming to me saying, I want to make passive income, why are you not making active income? Get up off your ass and work first. Because there's no such thing as completely, truly 100% passive. You're going to have to check on it. You have to maintain it. You're going to have to find a new tenant for that property. You're going to have to make sure that DeFi crypto farm you're in doesn't go to zero. It's not a rug pull. Yeah. You're always going to have to keep an eye on it, right? But the idea that people with no money are already so concerned with making money without work is amazing to me. You should be worried about active income. If you show me, if I'm a brokey, and you show me how to make $1,000 an hour, I don't sit there and go, okay, but how can I make that passive? I go, cool, I'm making $18,000 a day. I'm going to work. You don't need to worry about passive income until you have no more time. I look at passive income because I have 18 hours a day I work. When all 18 of those hours are done and my workload still isn't finished, I have to find a way to make some of those income streams passive, either via staff or whatever else. Yeah. And that's how I work smart. I use all of my time. And when all my time is done, well, now I have to become more efficient yep. so that I can get more done within the same time frame. To sit there and say, I don't want to use my time, so I want passive income is dumb at, is dumb shit. The 16 year old making 45 grand a month. If he was to sit to me and go, I don't want to make the TikToks. I want someone else to do it, make it passive, but he wouldn't make any money. He's just working. You have to just work. At some point you have to bite the bullet and just work. So when someone comes to me talking about passive income and they're a broke, you're like, you are just lazy. You are lazy. You'll never get anywhere. Lazy people never get anywhere in life. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's tennis or money. If you're lazy, you're never going to get there. To the normies, to the brokies, they're not ready to listen to it. Yeah. The Matrix, they say in the movie, people who are still dependent on the system will fight to defend the system. There are people who I will sit there and say to them, look, your university degree is a scam. They lied to you. I will show you how to make money. And their reply will be, no, I went to a good university. They are desperate. No, that degree means something. You work in Greg's, G. Doesn't mean any, shut up. They don't, they won't accept it, right? So certain people are not ready for the truth. People who are ready for the truth seek it and they find it.